Okay. Have we exhausted that subject? No, <laughs> we have not. Oh, sorry, Perry. For a while. You've had your hand up for a bit. Hi. Um, just on the subject of money again. Yeah. Because we're on the topic. And um, three years ago, I declared bankruptcy. Yep. And so I've had an issue with money for a number of years until the point where I couldn't take it anymore, the pressure. So I declared bankruptcy. It felt uh, the right thing to do at the time. Um, and it was around that time that I was changing my jobs from an old job, um, from working in bars and restaurants yep. into a more natural way of living, yep. working in, with nature and things. Yep. And so since then, my family see me as the one who's not earning the money, and I really feel it. And, um, and my brother actually makes quite a bit of money. Yep. And just to kind of share a story, um, my brother said, hey, Perry, there's a chance for you to earn some money here on eBay. Yep. You can sell some tickets, yep. and then you sell them later on when they're not available anymore. Yep. So I was going, okay, well, this is not really my passion, yep. but maybe I'm just scared of... So some ticket scalping. T yeah. <laughs> But then I thought to myself, maybe I'm just scared of stepping into that businessman role. And yep. it's actually okay to buy and sell that way. Yep. So I did it anyway. So I, he bought 20 tickets and I bought 10 tickets. And he sold all of his tickets within a week and I didn't sell any, any of my yours. tickets. Yep. <laughs> and then I gave my tickets to him to sell on his eBay account and he sold them all <laughs> in about four days. Exactly. And I, it just really showed me that if you're not doing your passion... Yeah then the money doesn't come anyway. Exactly. Um, Do you know the emotions that you have about it? Well, I think it's, it's interesting because I had a dream last night yep. which showed me some of the things. And it, I think it's to do with like, stepping into my greatness of what I feel. And I'm scared to feel um, that I can step into my power. Yep. And my, my dream was last night is that we actually had some personal time with you <laughs> and we were walking to a seminar and um, I was surprised that you were walking next to me. So there's like expectations of, oh, I'm just walking next to Jesus. That's okay. <laughs> and, um, Somebody's got it. And then actually you actually lit a cigarette and you started to smoke. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that's strange. Jesus is smoking a cigarette. So I was like, oh, that's just my expectations of what I thought Jesus would be like. Mm. And then you explained, because um, you're so loving, that it can't affect you anyway. Right. So it doesn't matter what's coming into you. You're so loving that you could just purify it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, um, so we got to the seminar, and we started to have a conversation, because just yesterday you asked me what I did for a living. Yeah. And I was talking about I was gardening. Yeah. So I don't passionately love it right now. Mm. And so I don't earn a lot of money at all. Um, and I, I told you that I was really passionate about these subjects, talking about God and the seminars and everything. But I didn't tell you my true passion would be to uh, work like you do and discuss and teach these teachings yeah. and uh, become available and, and live that way. Yeah. Like it really feels like a really strong desire for me yeah. for years, yeah. but yeah. only till I met you and this kind of scenery it kind of hit me. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is what I'd like to do. Yeah. But I didn't tell you that yesterday, but in my dream, I told you. Yeah. So when we got to the seminar, you said, okay, we're going to do the seminar now, and, um, and Perry's going to do it. <laughs> 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 and, you, and you winked at me and told me, you see how powerful your law of attraction can be when you, when you express your full desire. Yeah. And then I just went petrified and was yeah. like, oh, I can't do that. And um, so it showed me that I'm scared to actually step into the power which I feel I could deliver. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared of that. And most people are, Perry, yeah. Most, most people are very afraid of taking that step through that fear and mm. just doing it anyway. And letting, and letting, like we talked about yesterday, letting the desire uh, bring up, as Mary pointed you out You know, we day. talked about the step into your desire and then be humble to what the law of attraction brings you in that place. So, so what the law of the, attraction yeah. brought you in your dream was fear. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. right, I say, well, Perry's doing the talk now. So you expressed the desire. I said, well, does... And basically the way I treat that is I go, well, does Perry really have the desire? <laughs> Let's put him in the situation to see whether he's got the desire or not, right? Mm -hmm. And when you get placed in the situation, there is when all the fear gets triggered. And that shows you why you don't have a pure desire yet about the de you know, that desire being followed. However, I don't believe that any of what you've said has anything to do with why you had a bankruptcy three years ago. Uh, 
Okay. You have another emotion about money. There's a very powerful emotion that's causing a lot of your rejection of money. Can you feel what it is? About money itself. About money itself. About money itself. Yeah. yeah. The monetary system. At the time, actually, what happened was I felt I was tricked into getting the loans. Yeah. And I felt quite angry, actually, in the end, towards the banks. Yeah. Them, like, so go with the anger, because the anger is very good. It leads you to a place where you find out the real emotion. Yeah. So and I felt tricked by them. Yeah. And like they were able to trick me into that for my lack of intelligence around yeah. money. Yeah. And how logic it can be and to do with numbers and all those things and so I felt like they tricked me into getting the loans. It's even there's even more than this because it's related to your family, your father and your brother in particular. Can you feel what are their emotions towards money and yours in comparison? Well my dad I don't know because I haven't he left when I was about ten. Yep. So we didn't have a proper relationship. Yep. Um, what's your, br your brother reflects your father's opinion. So okay. what's his opinion? Well, my brother loves money right now. Yeah, he loves money, but, yeah. but what does he do? As a profession. What, I mean, what does he do with money? He, he basically oh. is an opportunist with money, isn't he? Well, he kind of wastes it right now in my eyes. Sorry? He, can't, he wastes money in my eyes right well, now. Well, yeah, he has plenty to waste, but, yeah. but the issue is um, how does he get it? He d gets it through opportunity, doesn't he? Well, his main profession is a tennis coach. So he gets it. It's a quite um, high-paid job. And he actually loves playing tennis from being a child. So he actually, through his passion of teaching tennis, he gets the money. But that doesn't cause him to ticket scalp on the internet. No, he saw that as because he wanted to, because he has a side business also now selling property. Yes. So he got into the tickets first. And now he sells property. Yes. So it was like a, a progression. So how does he view money? I think he uses it as power, actually. Yeah, see, what you're yeah. trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to say to yourself that his view of money has some kind of negative connotations. But I, I'm suggesting to you that actually the fact that money comes to him quite easily means that he obviously has less injuries towards money than you do, mm -hmm. right? Otherwise, the money wouldn't come to him quite easily. He would have more injuries if it didn't come easily. Like, so, so he has less injuries about money than you do. So the question then becomes, how do you feel about money in comparison to how he feels about it? Now, you have a very strong rebellious feeling towards money. Okay. You don't want to take any responsibility for any money. You don't like the idea of money very much at all. You have uh, what, what I would say most new age people have a uh, feeling towards money, and that is a feeling that uh, you know, they'd rather see the earth devoid of it. There's quite a lot of anger in, a, in it as well. Like this, and a feeling that I shouldn't have to... Like, you know, the feeling I was just voicing with Michael before, I shouldn't have to pay money for things like this or things like that. And, you know, I should be able to get a loan and it should, should be interest free. Yeah, <laughs> and things like that. That's the feelings you have. Yeah. So, so that creates a lot of that's a, that means there's a lot of resentment towards money inside of you. Now, if you resent something, does it does it feel attractive to you? No, logically. Not logically. But what no. you're saying, actually, I, I, in my mind, I think that I love money. Like I wouldn't mind to have lots of money, in my mind mm. and the way I feel. Uh, when we talk about this with an audience, and you ask, does everybody think they love money? And they all put up their hand. Yes. I'm happy with having more money, you know. Uh -huh. How many of you would like to receive a million dollars right at this point? And most people will put out their hands and say, yeah, a million dollars if there's no <laughs> string attached. Yeah, I'd definitely go for that, you know. I freak out I, because I've got the same emotion as you. Like, what, okay, how what do, do I, I do deal with, with it? it? <laughs> what do I do with it? Where, where do I put it? How, what's the rules with that? Like, ugh. yeah. Yeah. Now, for most people, they put out their hand, but the reality is that, you know, millions of dollars are handed around on this planet every single moment of the day and how come it's not handed into your hand mm -hmm. there's got to be a reason mm -hmm. now sure some of the reasons are that that the economic system is quite highly distorted and quite unloving and so therefore it's only the people who are 
in the unloving space that might receive some of it, but that doesn't account for all of the money and where it goes. So, so we've got to, you know, because there's plenty of people who are in their passion and desire and in a pure passion and desire who do receive money. So, so we've got to start questioning, well, why is it that we don't receive money, if that's the case? And like I said to you, I had to go through lots of other emotions, uh, emotions about my rage with money, about, about my rage with the system. The, the, you know, when you're enraged with something, you don't love it. Isn't that true? You're angry with it, you're not loving it. Now, if you're angry with money, the money system, how it all works and all those kind of things, then you don't love it. Mm -hmm. If you also are enraged with your family because of the competition emotion. So, for example, if you feel competitive with your brother because he has money and you do not, or he is looked upon as being better than you because he, has, because he can get money and you can't, then straight away you can see there's quite a lot of emotions involved in the issue of money. It's a measure... Today on the planet, money is one of the main measures of worth. So it's, it's very, very rare to go up to a person and say, G'day, how are you going? What, you know, we often then say, well, what do you do? And as they say, oh, I'm a bum who lives on the side, I'm a, you know, who lives, lives on the beach, uh, at Cactus Beach in uh, South Australia, or, you know, many of you would never have heard of that place, but it's a, fa it's a famous surf beach in Australia. Um, the, uh, uh, everyone goes, who, anyone who is anyone in the planet goes, yeah, he's a bit of a slacker, right? Like, most people don't have respect for that kind of a person who are in the money system. You got me? But if you say, oh, you know, I manage five companies and I'm a director of this and I do that and I do that, everyone goes, wow, you know, he deserves my respect. So even respect is given based on money and power on the planet that we have today. Can you see how that highly distorts a person's worth? Their real worth, from God's perspective, is based on their condition, their soul condition. But we don't see their soul condition at all. All we see is what they've created and how we judge the worth of the person based on what worth they have, their net worth, if you like. Now, many of us have a deep rage about that and anger about that that, that is the case, that things are just judged on, those, on that basis. And th our own anger in itself will prevent us from receiving money. There, there are so many m emotions involved in money, power, control, feeling, all sorts of, all sorts of, all sorts of emotions that we need to address. And the irony is that, that when you start addressing them, you will live, be able to live your life in passion and people will just want to give you money to help you do that. But not before you deal with the emotion. You have to deal with the emotion. You can't intellectualise it out of you. You can't do something differently. You have to actually change something at the soul level. So for any person who's not in a place where they've got, got enough wealth to even enjoy their life, my suggestion, particularly in the Western world, is a bit different perhaps in, the Eastern, in, in, in other places of the country, you know, the third world, because obviously the third world is getting heavily raped by the Western world. So they're already in a system that's being raped monetarily. But in the Western world, there, are, there is money available and we've got to start questioning when we don't receive it, we do have to question what's going on for my, myself there. I don't know about you, but I've donated to many causes in my life. Some, some causes have been individuals that I've donated to, like somebody wanted a car, so I give them a car, somebody, and so forth. And all I do is I look at the desire and the, wor and the worthiness of the cause, and then I give my funds based on the worthiness of that course. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, there's many other people on the planet who do the same thing. And so if we embrace a worthy cause as a desire inside of ourselves, we have a passionate desire to fulfil that worthy cause, it's highly unlikely if we do it in purity and in love that we won't receive funds from some source. Highly unlikely. We just have to deal with the emotions that are making it all impure. And that's what most of us avoid. And so when we, we, we don't deal with those emotions, and so then we start charging for our service or we start doing things that then fit into the system we're currently in 
And my suggestion is if you fit into the system you're currently in, you will survive monetarily most of the time, particularly if you're willing to work, but you will not be following your passions and desires and you won't deal with the reasons why money just isn't flowing when you do what you desire. So it's really important. To f it, I feel the money issue is a major issue of lack of love on the planet. In the end, we won't use money on the planet because we won't need to. We'll, I'll do my passion because I'm passionate about it and you'll want what I do because I'm passionate about it and because it has some benefit to society and then, and then you'll give me what you can give me that's out of your passion. So if your passion was growing food, then I'd get some of your food because that was your passion, you know? And if your passion was cleaning up the environment, then I'd get some of that as well in return, you know? And it's not a bartering system, it's just we both want to give each other that gift of what we're passionate about. And that would automatically happen in a, in a society that wasn't based on economic, uh, the, the economies that we have now. Yeah. But many of us have that ideal in our heart and then we get really angry the fact that the world's not like that. And that's the source of us not having money many times. Because anything we're angry with is not loving. So if I'm angry with the world in the way it is now, I'm not loving the world in the way it is now. The world won't change unless I love it. Um, so with the emotional processing, if I wasn't aware of my anger to the monetary system, and I don't feel that I can get angry at, to release my anger. Like I'm, 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 I'm feeling I don't know how to release my anger about what you just suggested. Well, just go back three years in time and remember the feelings you had when okay. you had to go bankrupt. Right. And start there. Mm -hmm. And the feeling was that you'd been duped and ripped off. Yeah. Start there. Let yourself fully feel that feeling instead of skipping over it. And then the process is just to feel those feelings. This is how it works. Feel the feelings yeah. and then feel why you feel angry. See, it's no good just to feel the anger without understanding why. Mm -hmm. And then see how that relates to anything within your childhood and anything in your current life. If you look at your family, they are very focused on money being the measure of a true worth, of true worth. Okay. And you have less worth than your brother in the eyes of your family. And how does that feel? Doesn't that hurt? I mean, I think I'm at a stage now where I don't fully feel less worth. It feels like that to me. No. If, if that was the case, you'd be receiving money. You see, the problem is with a lot of our progression is we tell ourselves a story thinking we've completed an emotion when the law of attraction is demonstrating something entirely different to us. Can you see? Mm -hmm. so, so we've got to be very honest about seeing our law of attraction. If I, so if I say, I've dealt with all my mother issues and every single day I still get angry women projecting anger at me. Have I dealt with my mother issues? No, I haven't. If I've dealt with all my money issues and I still have no money, then have I dealt with my money issues? No, I haven't. If I've dealt with my worth issues but I still feel like I'm not worthy enough to receive, then have I dealt with my worth issues? My law of attraction is telling me the truth as to the real place I'm in. The problem with us a lot of the times is we distance ourselves through time and also through many, much intellectual exercise, we distance ourselves from the emotion we feel. And then we tell ourselves we've resolved it. Right? You'd be surprised in, a, in the course of all of our talking that how often Mary and I get told, we, we, somebody comes up to us and says, oh, I, I want to talk to you about this particular issue. They start talking, don't they? And then within a few moments we say, well, can you just stop? I can give you the answer of what, you know, the emotion is, if you wish, you know. So we give them the answer. And they say, no, I've already dealt with that emotion. And then we go, no, because your law of attraction is showing you that you still have the emotion. So you mustn't have dealt with it. Oh, no, they say, no, they, they'll argue now, from now on, they'll argue, and they'll go, no, 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 that's not the case. That's just other people around me that are like that. <laughs> that's other people doing that to me now. Uh, and I'm saying, but no, no, 
they wouldn't be doing it to you if it were. This is the law of attraction affecting your life. Oh no, you know, and then they so they're so resistive that they'll even enter an argument, saying and trying to prove that their life has changed somehow and they have dealt with that emotion. When the reality is their very law of attraction that they've come to discuss with us is telling them that it hasn't been dealt with. So one thing I'd recommend to all of you is to take a lot of notice of what happens in your day-to-day -day life. Take a lot of notice about what happens. Because what happens in your day-to-day -day life tells you the truth about what is actually going on, whether you've dealt with something or not. The only way I know whether I've dealt with things or not is by my law of attraction telling me whether I've dealt with it or not. And, and does emotional processing, can it go in stages? Yes. Because I feel I'm uh, stronger than I was. I definitely agree money. with that. Because I feel now I'm just stable. You know, I can afford food. Yes. I don't get scared ordering a drink and things. Yes. But it's, I still have a desire to, have, to be more abundant. Yes. So it's not as... Uh, powerful as where I want to be, but it's better than where I was. Where you were, yes. yes. And, and please bear in mind this with all of our progression, it is a progression. It's not like, it's very rarely you go from here to, you know, you imagine a, a stairwell there, you know, this stairwell over here. For me to get from here right up to there in one, in one step is pretty hard, right? But, but the steps are there, right? So for me to get to there using the steps is pretty easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right, so, so this is what your life is like, right? We need to remember that, see, well, a lot of times we make this step and we go, I've resolved that issue. And where do we stay on the stairwell? <laughs> where I am, not, because I don't want to, I don't want to conceive I don't want to be aware that I've actually, I could make another step and be even better off. And I could make another step and be even better off. And it's very unlikely that I'm ever going to make that kind of a step mm -hmm. and it actually be successful. Right? It may happen sometimes, but it's pretty unlikely. And it's exactly the same with your processing emotionally. It's very hard for you to make these huge jumps, these huge leaps emotionally. And the reason why is because there's a lot of emotion in between there and there that we need to work our way through in a sincere and truthful manner. So we are, big, we are in our progression going to be doing this. It would be, it's be stepping up. If you think about it, we're stepping up in conditions of love as we're stepping up in our progression. And it's going to be like that. It's going to be, we're going to be able to look back and go, I definitely have changed from that point. I'm now, I can now see more where I am. I've got more awareness now of where I am. I've definitely changed from that point. But I also realise there's still another step to make. And when I get to that step, oh, now I can see things that I couldn't see when I was there. Right? And your progression is going to be everlastingly like that, eternally like that. And this is what we need to come to terms. This is why we need to come to terms with change, because anybody that doesn't come to terms with change makes a step like that, and they go, "Oh, boy, that was so hard. That was so difficult. I just, I don't know how I ever managed doing that." Oh, you know, and now, and look at me now. Isn't it wonderful? I've made this wonderful progress, and I'm just so fantastic now. And and there's no need for me to progress any further, right? And then, then a hundred years later, because that's how long it's going to take them to get out of that emotion, probably, they go like this, and they go, oh, I never knew that would be the case. So I don't, you know, and then they rave on about how great that was and that step that they made and whatever else. And the reality is it's our own emotional state that's slowing down our progression. The truth is when we walk up stairs, it, it's a, our, walking through our emotions is like walking upstairs. The reality is you can keep going. Right? Up the stairs. You can keep progressing and it'll be a slow and steady progress. What happens with most people is we make one step, we, we look at the step first and then we go, ah, oh, look at that step, it's too high for me, I can't handle that, you know, I don't want to do that, can somebody else lift me up for please? And they go, what? You know, they say, you know, you're not going to get much help doing that. And, and you're looking at the step and you say, you kick the step and you want the step to destroy, you get out the axe and try to cut the step out. <laughs> you, know, you do all sorts of things because you just don't want to make the step. 
And then you decide at the end of all of that resistance, so usually that resistance takes a long time, right? At the end of all of that resistance, you go, oh, perhaps I should take the step. <laughs> so you take the step. And then we want the reward from everyone around us. Right? So we tell everybody how great this step was. That we, isn't it wonderful? You give me the emotions of approval and acceptance and I'll feel good about the step and I can stay on this step for ages, just <laughs> waiting on this step, waiting for everybody to give me all of that stuff. And all I'm doing is stopping my next step. I'm slowing down. And then when I turn around and look at the next step, I do the same as what I did with this one. Try to cut it out first, you know, and try to kick it and kick it down and do all sorts of things because I don't want to make that one either. And this is the reason why most people on the Divine Love Path are struggling. Because we hit every step that we need to take in love. We complain and are bitter about it, firstly. We go through all this process of resistance. Then we realise we have to do it, so we do it. Then we want the glory and adulation from everyone else that we've done it. Isn't it wonderful? Right? That's how we go. And... And we stay there trying to get all of this emotion of, isn't it wonderful, aren't I wonderful, I've made all this progression, tell me that I'm wonderful, please, otherwise I'm going to, you know, step down, and so <laughs> forth. And, and we get to that point, and all we're doing with all of this shenanigans, which all this uh, shenanigans... Carry on. Carry on, like, you know, <laughs> it's like romanticising the whole process, <laughs> if you like. All I'm doing is I'm preventing my own joy by slowing down my own progress. That's all I'm doing. And I'd be far better off not involving anybody else in the process, looking at the step and going, isn't that wonderful? I've got a step towards God. I've got a step towards love that I can choose to step onto and I'll have to deal with some emotions and releasing those errors is going to be a bit painful. So I feel that pain because I'm ready and willing to feel the pain. And when I get to this step, I don't go to everybody, look at me, aren't I good? I've got the next step done. Isn't it wonderful? Please tell me that it's wonderful. I just look at the front and I go, wow, I've got another step. I can be closer to God again. I can be closer to love again. I can be closer to more happiness again if I take this next step. Now, do you think you'd be pausing at every step if you were doing that? Now, when it comes to our progression... With, with regard to any emotion, including the emotions with regard to money, including the, the, you know, any emotion we can think of, we are often so resistive to each step and we tell ourselves at the end that we've taken one step and then we're finished. We tell ourselves we're finished, we're over it now, when the reality is that our law of attraction, which is a very powerful tool God has given us to measure our progress up the stairwell, the law of attraction is telling us that, no, no, I'm sorry, you have made some progress on this issue, which is fantastic, and you, which will result in some level of joy, but you still have more progress to make on this issue before you become more loving. And babe, if you go back to the staircase. <laughs> what you demonstrated there is um, a shift that I feel a lot of us need to make on the path, yeah. and that is even... It, if when you were taking Myself and Mary were discussing this this morning, in fact. Yeah. When you're taking this step, the first step, and you look around at everyone else to say, look how I've made this step, you're demonstrating how invested you still are in the world around you. In everybody approving of you. And you're not looking up the staircase to your destination, which is God, mm. or this connection with God. And mm. it's, for me, making that transition from facing this way okay, that's <laughs> to, to this facing way that way and being purposeful and that's the humble place for me you know that's recognizing that there's not just one step there's a staircase in front of me mm. and that's my that's god is the ultimate loving force in the universe and this is where i'm at in the staircase so it's not taking a step and going, wow, I'm so developed now. Check it out, everyone. I'm a step up. You know, it's, it's taking a step and going, wow, you know, there's so there's much so there much for me to learn and grow. To embrace. And, and, yeah, and it, it keeps us humble in the stepping. But it also, the rewards, if we rely on the rewards from this direction all of the time, from the people around us, it's, we're very dependent on their emotional condition. We're dependent on their presence in our life. If we, if we face that way... There's, there's this growing relationship that becomes more and more rewarding mm -hmm. through our remaining humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. 